Someone touched my hand. There is something in this house. Abduction and phantoms await the most haunted crew in a Welsh manor house. I am scared. Welcome to Most Haunted. This week we're going to take you back to the 1600s and to a place that's so haunted every room has a ghostly tale. Echoing footsteps, phantom children and spectral images have all been seen behind these doors as we investigate Llancayach Fawa Manor. Llancayach Fawr Manor House was built in the 1600s by Colonel Edward Pritchard and his family. The colonel played a major role in several local battles during the English Civil War. To ensure his family were always safe, he rectified his home into a fortress with walls up to four feet thick. He split the manor into two sections, one for his troops and the other for his family, which provided a safe haven for all. This manor house is not just famous for its ghostly inhabitants, but also for its royal connections. It was only when I started working here 12 years ago that I started to hear about the, the different tales of the unexpected, inexplicable happenings that occurred to past residents and also to us who were employed at Lancaster Flower. I think it's a very haunted place. It's got the right ingredients, it's made of stone, it's had a family that's been here for hundreds and hundreds of years, there's been feuds, there have been very famous people that have stayed here and like so many other places it's got the basic ingredients of a haunted house. People tell me that they do see things here so uh, see what happens later. The kitchen would have been the centre of activity in the 1600s and a ghost from the original household could still be seen here preparing food for non-existent guests. Now, above us, ghostly footsteps can still be heard, and so heavy are these footsteps that plaster has fallen to the floor. Before we were actually open to the public, I was in one of the upper rooms, the room that's known as Martha's Room, or Estavell Mati in Welsh, and we were actually using that room as a, a sort of a stock holding room. I was there with a colleague of mine, and we were counting stock and we heard footsteps marching quite purposefully up the corridor towards us. The footsteps stopped and we shouted out to come in, expecting to see one of our colleagues, but there was no one there. Um, we settled back down to our stock taken and heard the footsteps once again, and there was no mistaking that the, the footsteps definitely had a purpose. This room is the Great Hall and is directly above the kitchen where those ghostly footsteps have been heard. Also, this room used to be a court and seen often is a dark, ghostly, shadowy figure of a man who sits and stares out of the window. I lived here for just about 30 years. Never knew that I shared the house with so many spirits until we, the manor was changed and was bought by the local authority and the spirits have shown themselves a lot more since its um, inception as a museum and, and since its inception when the house was taken back to the 17th century. There's a lot of reenactment done here. People dressing up, people reenacting things from the past and it's surprising how many places that have reenactors, for some strange reason it tends to activate the ghostly occurrences because there are people reliving what happened in this house all those hundreds of years ago. When I was in the house actually working in costume as one of the costumed interpreters and a young couple came along with a baby and asked me to just look after the baby while they went upstairs. The baby was sleeping in a, a buggy 
and the baby woke up and suddenly the baby's attention was drawn away from me at the foot of the stairs and looked upwards and the baby's eyes actually followed something or someone coming down the stairs, although I could see absolutely nothing. This was the master bedroom, where a phantom figure has been seen just staring at visitors. The ghost of a soldier has been seen bursting through the door and then disappearing. And people often get the feeling of being very depressed in here for no reason. But it's in another bedchamber where an even more strange experience occurs. Several people have witnessed this cot rocking on its own. And if it happens tonight, we will catch it. I was leading a ghost tour up in the north chamber of the house and there were just about 10 of us on the tour standing quite a distance away from the cradle and suddenly one of the, the ladies that was on the tour shouted out, hey, look at that, look what, look. We all turned around and the cradle had started rocking of its own volition. <laughs> Since then, we've actually gone up into that room and jumped on floorboards trying to make the cradle rock again but absolutely nothing. As usual, Phil Wyman, our paranormal investigator, had carried out the baseline test prior to our investigation. Knowing that the cot had been witnessed moving on its own in the past, he set up a dusting experiment if the cot did move, would we catch any ghostly fingerprints? So, Phil, this is a particularly favourite uh, location. Why is that? Well, I've been aware of this place for about a year and a half. Um, the history around the place and the fact that it's supposed to have about eight ghosts um, has always fascinated me. I've always wanted to come to, to this place and do an investigation. Now, people that work here, they actually dress up in 17th century clothing. Right. Do you think that actually stirs up any energies? The possibilities of that happening are, are quite high, actually, because if there are spirits from the time of their costumes, they may be more willing to interact with them if they recognise a person from their own time. Yeah, so. they might find it attractive and exactly. they want to join yeah. in. Yeah. Um, what about the baseline test? Did you actually pick up any activity at all? We've not picked anything up with the baseline tests as of yet, um, but as you know, we'll be walking around later with the, the meters and the, the thermometers. We may well pick something up later on when it gets dark. Where are the key places that you would quite like to spend some time in? Right, the, the key places I'd like to go tonight are the bedroom where the, the cradle is, or the cot, which has been known to rock, and a place just above the, the kitchen here, where there have been known to be heavy footsteps heard, which are that heavy, supposedly, that the plaster from the ceiling in the kitchen has fallen on the floor. We're going to be putting a dictaphone in there later on um, to see if we pick something up with that. That will be interesting, won't it? Yeah. What I, what I want to do as well is, of course, we're going to do the walk around with Derek later. Mm. Um, I'd like for us two, on our own, to walk around and spend some time in the, the rooms upstairs. Right. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Why? Because it'd just be the two of us. It'd be just the two of us, yeah. In this house? In this house, yeah. It's just purely to, to um, get rid of the group element surrounding with the crew. Um, so we can, you know, something might happen with just the two of us, so hopefully... Just for a short period of time? Just for a short period of time, yeah. OK, probably knowing me, it'll only be two minutes. Probably, yeah. I'll probably <laughs> run after you down the, down the path. <laughs> Whenever we take people on our, our ghost tours of the manor in the evening, we always state that the only thing we guarantee is that we can't guarantee anything. So possibly some of you, all of you, one of you will experience something, or possibly you will experience nothing at all. With our spiritualist medium, Derek Akora, joining the rest of the crew, we were ready to walk over to the manor to start our investigation. Edward Williams, a former resident, would also be joining us for the night. It had become cold and snow had started to fall, so the house, despite its ghostly occupants, seemed an inviting place to go. Isn't this fantastic? This is absolutely the pinnacle of feelings, isn't it's it? Brilliant. About... It's got a lovely warm feeling to it. It has, and you know, this is like love, the feeling of, you know, benign, it's, um, it's just lovely, actually. It's a real, real kindred feeling of, like, come on, we invite you in. 
There's no rejection. Are they, are they aware, the spirits, uh, of, of you actually being here? I would say very much so of And of us being here? All of us, the whole of the crew, mm. which is nice to feel for a change. Mm. Do you want to stay here or go? Can we yeah. move through yeah, into this set under this go. area here? Okay. Now I'm very aware as if, you know, a lady, a lady, a very hard working lady, a very diligent lady, so to speak, would have walked, been associated here in this area and walking through through the store into this next area. She would have felt that she was um, Quite simply, the lady in charge at some point or other. And I get, who? Thank you. She wants to be announced. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Yes, she's one of many that comes in in visitation. She's not permanently here. She comes in, but she's just said quite simply, please announce me. I'm Martha. Mm -hmm. She calls herself. I am Martha. I'm very proud of it as well. He says she wants to hold a hand like this, you know, under her bosom. Bless her. And it's like, oh, she was. She's very bosomy, if that's the right word. Mm. And, you know, like this. And she'd walk around and that, that pinny forward and down here. And it's like, come on, we have no time. We've got to get on with our duties. And it's like as if she just wants to take me through like this into this area. Yes? OK. There are two little boys as well that follow Martha, who are now in the world of spirit. Unfortunately, these two boys, these two youngsters, um, passed and left the physical body very early. Right. <clears throat> what age would you say? I feel uh, possibly two and a half, uh, and maybe one even uh, a little bit older. Yeah. But I feel as if they're with her in the energy of spirit, uh -huh. but they did not belong to her. What about Martha? Uh, can you possibly try throughout the evening to come up with a surname for I'll her? I'll try very hard. Yeah. I, I, I know she wants to communicate. Yeah. And she, yes. Yes. Oh, Ma, thank you. I can hear you. She said, yes. Um, I am um, uh, responsible um, to Anne. To Anne. Who? Anne who? Anne who? Miss Anne Pritchard. Of course. Miss Anne Pritchard. OK, she was a governess to her, and the children belonged in that condition. These are Pritchard children that follow me. Come through, she says, the voice. Oh, yeah. Can we just go yeah. through? So she, she's the governess for, to the children? Yes. Martha? I feel that she, she, they were designated to her. Right. They were around her to follow her. Right. OK, thank you. Even though Derek has picked up on the correct names, it's believed that Martha and the Pritchard family did not belong to the same era. We cannot be 100% sure of this, as most of the family records were burnt in a fire. Oh, yes. This area here, one of those little boys, likes nothing better as he comes out. I'll just use the expression as he gives me. Yeah. It's like as if he hops, bless him, like this, down on his two little legs, like that. And he rests his arm like that, his left arm. Oh. But he stands often here. And he has a little look when people are walking round. And he's most interested. And then off he goes when he sees Martha. It's, and he scurries across oh, to Martha like this. And is Martha aware of the children? Very much so. And it's like as if she loves them. She loves them. Who? Say it again. Yes. Is he upstairs? We count on Colonel. We count on the Colonel. We count on the Colonel. Yes. He's fair. He looks after. He's fair. The Colonel. OK, say it again. He often comes here as well. He comes down and stands in this area. And he smiled. And he must have been seen. And he was rather pleased with that effort on his behalf. Right. Colonel Edward. Colonel Edward. Right. Colonel Edward. Just man. There's a protectiveness in this place, you see. There's a protectiveness. Yes. Okay, those bedrooms. Okay, tell me when we... 
We go to the bedrooms. Okay. Right. Do you want us to go up? We'll go up then. Yes. Already Derek had managed to pick up on some of the manners past residents, but would he be able to tell us who was responsible for moving the cot and walking the floor upstairs? With Derek already picking up on some of the residents of the manor, we were all eager for him to find out more and if he would be able to give us the name of the family that once resided here. Now, at this moment in time, I get movement of a spirit person, a man, who's been flashing, so to speak, between this room here and through into this section. And I don't know why... He, He's not giving me uh, reasons, but it's Colonel Edward Pritchard. Right. He's the governor. Right. He's the governor. And he's a very proud governor. And he comes in overseeing often. So he's, not, no... he's not here all the time? No, he's not here all the time. His true resident is in the world of spirit. And he's taken his place in the world of spirit. But because of his nature, and he was a good man, um, and, you know, I get Anne walking through. I get Jane walking through. Jane. Anne and Jane. I get Elizabeth walking through. And Tom walks through. And it's all part of these lovely fam family. Uh, whoa. Can we just go through into this oh, next yeah. area? If yeah, I, yeah, because yeah. I, you know, I go through here. They all want to see someone, a lady shouting a name out, Mary, my name is Mary, my name is Mary, I belong to, I belong to, yes, very sweet lady. She, it's like, she likes to um, not give the impressions if she's actually walking. She likes to glide, so to speak, while she's in a spirit body, going scooting across the rooms. Um, can you give me more, please, of those names that you give me before? They are all Pritchards. They're all Pritchards. Yeah, but they don't really want to assume. There's a man that walks the stairwell and they don't want to associate with him. Why? Mm. Why don't they want to associate with him? Well, he's not bad. He's just not belonging to us. <laughs> <laughs> OK. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you. Well, he's one of the Lewises, isn't he? <laughs> we don't... He doesn't belong with us. He's Lewis. We see him. He sees us. <laughs> David. David Lewis. David Lewis. OK. The little child and the woman who goes to the crib and rocks the crib. A child and a woman go? Yes. And they do, they, they rock the crib? They rock the crib. Are it's they... not just the woman, it's the child as well. Are they people you've already mentioned? Spirits you've already mentioned? I don't know at this moment, Phil. I'm also very aware now that my left limb, left side, is if it's swiped away and someone is not talking, uh, as if... He had a, a false limb, it could have been a stick or something, pole, here, and walking round. And he would make noises with this pole at times. A pole? I call it a pole. It's not a, f a leg. It's yeah. not a false leg. It's like a Almost pole. Almost like or... Long John Silver with the old Something fashion. like this, yeah. And I feel he's been heard at some time or other here. There was great sadness. There was great sadness over two of those little children that didn't survive mm. in this family here. And, of course, everything's fine now in the sense that the children are safe and well, and they do visit, but they're in the lovely realms of light. Right. But quite regularly, because Martha's in the atmosphere quite a mm. lot, these two kiddies right. come in right. to be around her right. to see what Martha's doing. Right. But Martha's replaying her role when she comes into the atmosphere, mm. of what a very busy role of what she did. How did Martha die? I, I feel on that question uh. as if um, her life most definitely was shortened, okay? Uh. 
um, maybe as we go on, yeah. as we ask, because we've still got plenty of time. Yeah, I don't want to rush anything. I no, want to get it off all. them yeah. as clearly as I can. Yeah. Uh, Charles. Charles liked it here. He picked up the love here, Charles. Mm. King Charles. Right. His atmosphere of his energy periodically visits here. Gosh. Just periodically. Mm. I don't feel shows himself not to be seen, mm. just of visiting. And I feel it could be the encouragement of the Colonel. Right. You know. Yeah. Come on, have a little, you oh, know, a yeah. little look. Do you want to very quickly go into one of the other rooms here? Please, yeah? yes. Yes, okay. thank you. OK. This is it. This is the crib. <clears throat> now, the lady and a child, I feel it's one of the little boys, the youngest little boy, who accompanies her oh. and helps rock this or right. movement and touch. And just of recent, I feel quite recent. Edward, is, is that happened? It has, yes. Yeah. Recently. Just before Christmas. Is there a lot mm. of activity in this room? A lot of childlike activity, mm. yes. Yeah. Pulling with clothes. Yes. And doing with shoelaces. A childlike um, thing, yes. you see. Yeah. Yeah. And they would do that, but not an ounce of, like, negative about them. Just fun yeah. and enjoyment and just, yeah. you know, mm. it's like you can be childlike, that's to be, like, godly. To be childish is the opposite. Mm. So there's only childlikeness here. Mm. So mm. it's lovely. Mm. To me, it's a lovely feeling. I thought that was amazing. Absolutely amazing. To be honest with you, my first impressions before tonight were that I wouldn't be impressed. But what Derek picked up, and having spoken to Derek earlier, I know that he had no previous information of the history of the house. And what he picked up was astounding. He's coming up with names. Even though the link isn't what we thought, he's coming up with names uh, that, are, that are spot on. He's coming up with uh, historical detail that is spot on. Yes, he could have researched it, but he could only have researched it if he knew where he was going. So, having spoken to Derek and spoken to the crew here, I'm confident that what he is telling us is what he's feeling at the time and it wasn't researched and it's very very impressive with all the lights off the atmosphere seemed to change in the house with derek being there would he stir any activity up and would we catch anything on camera now i feel that uh the feelings of um in its own way caught and and judgment in its own right mm -hmm. but that's within the residual energy here but also what's come in here is an individual that i feel is not as kindred as all the other links as if he did something who is so, he hold on he's shown me a mental picture here of a young girl <coughs> a young girl and this young girl he's guilty of what Richard Lewis, is that what I say? Richard Lewis is guilt, was guilty something with this little girl, this young girl. And there's a female, a lady, who tackles the name Richard. She comes into the atmosphere and every time they come together and they seem to come in here, it's as if she draws him in here. And it's, you know, in our day and age, we talk as if we're ticking each other off. Mm. <coughs> yes, you were wrong, you were wrong, you were wrong, you were wrong. Who's that, please? Who's the nice lady? It's who? Gladys. 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 Gladys who? I feel she is Pritchard. Right. Gladys Pritchard. Right. They're still arguing over this issue. Of the, this little what girl. What did they do? Yes. Yeah. What did they do? I feel this little one here, please, would have been 12, 13. He took her. He took her. He took her away. He took this little girl away. Do, do uh, you know what her name was? What's her name, please? Now, I'm only 
sensing because I'm not getting it verbally, but I'm sensing because in my mind's eye, I get S A R A H mm -hmm. Sarah. Mm -hmm. I feel there's got to be a connection. Um, oh, to me, thank you. He's just given me something. In this day and age, we have people, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, that have a, their tendencies to um, <clears throat> take youngsters away and, you know... She I was think, abduct, ab abducted? Yes. Right. And uh, I feel there was great, great anger over this. That is the only anger that still exists. Genuine family anger. And um, I feel that this family are still prompting and waiting for this soul to renounce and say, I am sorry, I did the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Can we go through to the next mm -hmm. room? Yeah. Thank you. It's just good because it just told me something. That it was, um, okay. I'm aware, again, of the essence of the kernel, but also I'm picking up a small man, very busy in setting things around. Who is he? He's the, uh, a valet, uh -huh. a valet, and um, a trusted man. This man knew how Martha, Martha, mm -hmm. is the only one who truly knows how Martha had to leave her physical body. How? What? Tragically. She left it tragically. I feel she was, um, I feel she was murdered. Mm -hmm. I feel her life was taken from her. In, in what fashion? I feel in some kind of, um, did you hear that, or is that...? Mm. It was in here. It was in here. It was in here, yeah. What? In here, it did it. Yeah, in here. It did. It was very, very distinct. What was it? It was like... A skid running. Yes, a running. A child running. Are you sure it wasn't the stairs? No, no. And it was. It sounded like... A... Now, this could have been the guy with his leg, OK? You know what I talked about earlier? Yes. Yeah. That, and if it's not him... This is a child, but um, say it again, please. The mystery of so we want it said properly. Okay, I'll say it properly. I promise you. Just tell me. Someone kept it a secret. The valet, the valet, the man with the stick, the loss of the limb. He was the one who took the life of Martha. Right. Is that right? It is tell of a witness of a servant with a limp walking through the uh, servant's room underneath. Uh -huh. That was him there coming through. But because I was on his tail, yeah. but he took her life. She was poisoned. Yeah. But not by the valet? Not by the no. valet. But he know. He was all-knowing. All he was aware of it, yeah. and he kept... He kept still. Mm. As yes. master servant would. Mm. Yes. The person with the false leg, his name is James. James. What's the matter? Just, just when you came out, this curtain just did this. And I, I looked straight through to see if anyone was behind it or anyone had come into the room. There was no one there. And there's uh, been a, like a, a shadow. I moved everything to see if it was me, there was any light coming through, and it didn't move. But there's a shadow over there by that covered the... the sort of sideboard there and I've just done it again to see if it was still there and it seemed like something touched my hand yeah it's probably been exactly the same soul that scurried through here and has gone right round Carl so and then don't possibly worry you know with that care and it's shadow With Derek's part of the investigation over, Phil and I decided to go it alone inside the house. This was not something I was looking forward to. With the dictaphone placed in the hall, which is where strange footsteps had been heard, and with our own night vision cameras, we were ready, if not slightly apprehensive. Go on then, Phil. Right, here we are. This is where Martha's supposed to have been seen. Okay. How do you feel? Um, OK, to be honest, at the moment. Uh, don't forget, Derek said there's nothing sort of um, nasty around here, and it's all sort of nice, yeah. so... 
Do you want to sit down here for a bit? Or? Should we sit down here for a little bit? Yeah. We sit? I think maybe if we sit here in the corner. Okay. And then maybe see, have a little chat and see if Martha might. Right. So this is where what Martha has been. She's been seen in this corner. I'll sit on that. Yeah? I should be okay. No. Okay. Bit uncomfy, but be all right. Okay. It's quite surreal, actually, because you can see out the window. It's absolutely just chugging it down with snow. Quite strange. Should we do a bit of talking? Yeah. So Martha. Martha. The housekeeper of the Pritchard family. Are you in the kitchen? Are you here? Can you try and do something for us? Maybe by a light form. Could you show us a light? Just to show us that you're here and that you're listening to us. Is there anybody in the room with us at this moment? Martha? Are you here? Is there anybody here with us now? Perhaps show, perhaps show yourself as a light form. Hmm. Oh. There's something there. Don't know what it was. Is that you? Is that you that just made that light? Just keep talking, Phil, because you never know. Martha, if you're here, can you give us a sign of some sort? Or should we have a wander around and go out to the left? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I hate walking around. Why? I don't know, I just feel a little bit more vulnerable because you don't ever know what's around the corner, do you? Yeah. So far, so good. The house was so quiet and still. But would it stay that way as Phil and I made our way upstairs? I am scared. This is Martha's room. Okay. okay. We're here this in is... Martha's room. Right, do you want to, I think we should just take a chair and sit here for a few, a few minutes. Yeah. Um, let's see what happens. Now, through there, that's where the... Well, Carl said he saw this dark shadow, didn't he? Yeah, he saw the, the shadow... And you saw that curtain move, which is right in front of the, the, the shot you're getting there. She said they saw, saw the curtain move. Now behind that is where we heard the sound. What to me sounded like um, something walking on, on a wooden floor. Um, fairly briskly, but if, that, if we hear something, yeah. don't go berserk, all right? I'll try not to. Okay, because you, you'll start me off. Okay. <laughs> Right. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say you inject me with fear when you go off on one, and which is not very good. <laughs> Getting a bit cold in this corner. Are you? Yeah. Where's the laser thermometer? I've got it. You've got it, yeah. What's it say? 13 degrees. Mm. Is there anybody in the room with us now? Is it still there? No. Hmm? No. It's gone. It was around here. Did you hear that? What was it? <laughs> I'm not freaking. It's okay. Good girl. I think you're very proud of me. I am. Um, the side table over there. Yeah. Just creaked. I thought I heard something. Yeah. Um, and it was right close to me, and I was just aware of just something like a slight movement okay, right. over to the to my right. Mm -hmm. I've been very brave. You are, you've been very good. Yeah, until hopefully. Yeah. You know, you never know something. Well, just don't panic, because you know we know the Derek says there's you know. Friendly people. It's because we're dealing with something that we don't understand. Oh, yeah, exactly. Whether it be a scientific explanation or anything, it's still 
frightening because it's some things can just happen mm -hmm. for no explained reason. Mm -hmm. You keep focusing on that area if you want to. This is, you know, all the locations we've been to, okay, things aren't happening. In all the locations we've been to, the fact that there's just the two of us alone in this big house in the dark, the others, uh, you know, a minute, two minute walk away, and um, even though that's not very far away, they're in a separate building away mm. from us. And I am, I am, I am scared. I am scared. <laughs> Shall we go? Yeah. Phil and I had completed an hour alone. We had managed to catch a light anomaly on camera and also a creaking noise which we caught on our microphones. We decided to go and get the rest of the crew and split into groups so we could cover the whole building. Richard Felix, Tom our sound man, Phil and John our cameraman went into the birthing room and I decided to stay downstairs with two of our cameramen, Rick and Craig. Is there anybody here in the room with us? Is there any spirits who'd like to show themselves to us? Colonel Pritchard, are you here? There not mean any harm, we just want to investigate you. <laughs> I don't actually feel as if there is anything actually here at the moment. I don't know. I'm oh, there is. There yeah. is. Do you think? Yeah, there is. Whether it be, I'm not saying that it's ghosts. I'm just saying there's definitely an energy here. Yeah, I've whether definitely. It, whether it be scientific, I don't know. There's, there is something in this house. So how's everybody feeling? I'm looking for temperance. Calm. Yeah. Content. I'm not spooked at all. Mm. Doesn't there appear to be anything in here tonight, does it? for a building that's got uh, rather a lot of central heating around it, active central heating and so on, with very creaky boards. Mm, it's a very quiet Where building. You walk, it normally it creaks like mad, and it, it is remarkably calm and quiet. Mm. That, that, that's a point, isn't it? Because it's so old, most houses grown a bit. Yes. This just... Very, very calm. Please show yourself to us if you can, or do something to prove your existence. Please show yourself. Make a noise, move something, throw something off the table just to prove anything. What the fuck? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. That was Squeaking in a squash court, didn't it? Yeah. That to me, sometimes it could have been one of the logs. Sometimes they make high pitch noises. So I thought that was coming from upstairs. No, no. I'm from in there. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> that really scared me. Did it? <laughs> I just could have sworn, I was shooting up the stairs at the time and uh, I could have sworn it came from up there and it sounded more like a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most pathetic on this program. Oh. Please give us a small sign. Let us know that we're not alone. There is someone in this room with us. Use our energy, our combined energy in this room, to make a sound. It feels like there's someone in the room. It's so cold. Yeah, it's freezing. Oh, my goodness. There's someone in here. Please give us a sign. Mm -hmm. No matter how small.
property horrid noise. <laughs> Go on. Did you hear that? Yeah. Thud, thud, thud. Thud, thud, thud. Go on. Cool. Phil, it's Yvette. Phil, it's Yvette. Did you just make three bangs on the floor? No, I didn't. Okay. We've been downstairs and we heard three very loud bang, bang. That's quite weird. Which room are you in? The, the cot room. Go check out the... Great hall. In the great hall. Right. And there's a small room there as well. Okay, down here. Let's go have a look. Mind your head. After searching the house, we could find no reason for the banging. Could it have been paranormal? During the night, other investigations had taken place, but nothing had occurred. After checking the dictaphone, we discovered nothing unusual, and the cradle had not moved. However, we did pick up three loud, unexplained bangs and a couple of light anomalies. We had wanted more, but as we know, you can never guarantee anything when investigating haunted locations. I do get the feeling that some of the crew were slightly disappointed with the events that happened last night. Um, unfortunately, due to the, the history and the reputation for this place being haunted, I think they were expecting ghosts to, to come out of the walls, um, which is, in most venues, not likely to happen just like that. I had great expectations, a very haunted house. Uh, it was a great privilege to be able to wander around a place like this, but uh, I'm a bit disappointed because nothing, nothing actually happened to me. It was interesting to know that Derek, again, was spot on with the things he gave us, the information he gave us, and a lot of this can be verified uh, through tracing the, the family history and the connections with the manor. Some of the individual spirits who still come in and visit in visitation at this lovely building, they were still showing the same amount of warmth and love as they did when they were in the physical bodies. He came up with names, he came up with a Gladys. I'd looked on the, uh, um, the family tree and there was a Gladys Pritchard, an Edward, Colonel Edward Pritchard. He's absolutely right. He's one of the main people in the house. He mentioned Charles I. So all that was right. This place is a fascinating place. Uh, it, it, it warrants a lot more investigation work. Uh, but what we did get last night from an investigative point of view was quite interesting and I, I think was very good. There'll be very few places in further investigations, as far as I'm concerned, that I feel that could match the love and the warmth that still exists in a building after hundreds and hundreds of years. And if there is one, well, I'll hold my hand up and say, well, I was wrong. I think this investigation illustrates nicely how people's expectations about what's going to happen can influence their actual experiences. So people came along with very high expectations that they would experience and perhaps see ghosts at this manor house. But as the hours passed and not much was really happening, they were getting more and more desperate that something would happen. So by one or two o'clock in the morning, when they were hearing maybe sort of the, the odd rap or bangs in the distance, people were finding this very shocking and often very frightening. What the fuck? What's the fire? What's the fire? It sounded more like a... <laughs> <laughs> With regard to the light anomalies, um, it's actually a little bit ironic that as some of the footage of these uh, improves, in that they appear on the screen for longer, in my opinion, they start to look more and more like either very small insects or small particles of dust just blowing on the breeze in the room. One thing I find very interesting about this investigation is that Yvette seems to be becoming a little bit more sceptical in her interpretation of things that happen. So she doesn't necessarily always jump to a paranormal explanation if she hears uh, a bang in the distance or hears a rapping. Sometimes wood 
in a fire can make a high-pitched whistle noise. And this suggests then that she is becoming a little bit more rational in her approach and even though she admits that uh, in this particular investigation she's very, very scared when she's sitting in the house alone with Phil, um, but she is able now to at least consider other more rational explanations for the noises that she hears. Well, not a lot happened last night. It just goes to show that haunted houses are just as unpredictable as the weather. Until the next time, sleep tight. As we investigate Blancana Fire Juana Juana. <laughs>